What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Welcome. Um, thank you guys again for joining us for a brand new episode of Behind the Trance. I am Mama Danielle. Over there is Alistair. And today we are interviewing the one and only Darren Porter. Yay! Mm. How are you, my love? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. How are you, Danielle? How are you? We're good. We're good over here. The weather has been kind of consistent for change. It's been like windy, windy, hot, windy, cold, windy, windy, hot, hot, windy. But it's been consistent for three days, so it's nice. I mean, I'm wearing a tank top and a or you know sundress and a sort of so it's not too bad. How how's the yeah. weather over there in UK? <laughs> yeah, we've got kind of like all the click and collects for the window for for the summer here for the but then um, we've had a really good three days actually. Last three days have been beautiful. Um, nice. I bought myself a bike and I get some some of this COVID Ooh. belly off, uh, and so I've got myself a bike while riding. <laughs> but anyway, Alistair, hi, nice to see you, man. Good um, to see you um, too. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you again somewhere soon, soon. Hopefully, hope. soon, 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 as in somewhere either in the United States or us going to you. Hopefully. <laughs> anywhere <laughs> anywhere <Sure>. please <laughs> so what do you think are your chances of Lumi? do you think it's well it's it's you know i dare not say anything because i like, jinx it because <laughs> look, look things, things are on a good things are on a good momentum right now things are starting to all back up a little bit a little bit of sense of normality so yeah i'm i'm waiting for the day and i'm gonna be there that's what i'm gonna say so yes <laughs> My everything's been booked for me for over since for 2020. So I'm gonna roll it over. So I don't know if the Center Parks cottages will be as nice as last time to let me roll over <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. Um, I don't want to say difficult, but I might. There, there'll be some obstacles to have the same what we used to. At there will be some hurdles. We're getting better every year. It was getting bigger yes. and better and better. And I've been privileged to have played quite a few times at Lumi over the years, and. Um, yeah, I was good at that. We we didn't get to go um, last year. Really good at and to to say like, oh, we have to wait another year. It was almost guaranteed it was going to be here this year, and even yeah. that's got a little bit of a mm, touching goal about it. But I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm optimistic. It's been yeah, I'm I'm optimistic to go because um, EDC Portugal is going the, the week, week before, before. Yeah. and I just message some people over there and i was like hey like i have tickets i have an airbnb booked should yeah. i be looking into plane tickets so they're like as of right now we look like we're going i'm all so i was like okay well edc portugal goes everything else should kind of follow portugal i think because i think they're with weather wise yeah, that's kind of what they were saying so, theoretically speaking yeah <laughs> theoretically i think i yeah. think once you decide that that's schengen on mainland europe i think with one goal is they all kind of have to go so yeah, yeah there's a little bit of optimism so yeah go portugal <laughs> yes so hopefully because my goal is to go from portugal to go from portugal over to lumi because they're back-to-back -back weekends and then i'll be very fun <laughs> mm -hmm. it will be first one of the world for 12 months <laughs> yes. Well, ne next week um, or next week, next month, we have EDC Vegas. That's going live. So, and it looks like it's oh, going. Ahead. It's going. Yeah, it looks like, like it's by full steam ahead. It's going to be interesting because, yeah, I don't even know. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> I didn't know you were <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm. You know, it's moving forward. It looks good. Everyone looks good. So we're just hopefully, yeah, hope, we'll see. We'll see what happens at the end of May. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a good idea. Optimism. Not. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> uh, for everybody in the chat, thank you guys for joining us. Ask your questions. We will ask them to Darren for you. Um, otherwise, you know, your country has said June 21st is kind of your date. That everything's reopening do you think that date's actually going to happen well i i, I really hope so it depends on each and each every country the uk um also we, we the uk isn't a part of the mainland europe so they kind yeah. of and the whole brexit things so they don't have to follow the same rules and it's a little <laughs> bit messy right now um yeah. but yeah i'm gonna i think once we start like what you said there once it started opening up a little bit because there are gigs going ahead in the uk um, yeah. are planning to go ahead and I'm uh, just hoping that the government won't decide to be 
you know, party poopers again. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, yeah. You can say the C word. <laughs> big Sean, shout it loud, big couple yes. of letters. Yes. 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 My favorite word that I learned from you, Brits. <laughs> it's not a word to be used lightly. There's a lot, lot of British people don't like that word. It's like one of the worst really? words you could possibly use. Yeah. See, I, I probably learned it from a bunch of Scottish people because they use it all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, I learned it from my granddad. It's when got, I was just it's like got, a cat. It's, got, it's, got, me, it's got me at least two Facebook bands, so it's definitely a word that I have to be careful <laughs> when I use it. Because I just God. sometimes just say it and I'm like, oh shit, I can't post for twenty four hours or thirty days. Yeah. <laughs> unless it's uh, you know, unless it's uh, you know it, it's a uh, you know, used in an artistic way, shall we say? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> how do you use it in an artistic way that's kind of funny <laughs> so, i'll figure it out i'll get, I'll get back to you on that one I'll find a way out from so what do you have planned for june 21st i don't know <laughs> <laughs> plans, plans is um yeah we we have we have yeah to be in europe and and hopefully back Back in the run of things so um, yeah i'm scared of jinx this man stop it <laughs> <laughs> yeah please don't but if uh, i need a rave Lumi, yeah we've talked about lumi i've got some i've got i've been working on quite a lot over the last 12 months not as not as quickly as i've uh, usually been i'll um, get that in a second but um yeah i'm just excited to to even get back into that that, that vibe and, and just to feel that crowd one more time I'm really nice. missing it, Mike. I'm really missing it. <laughs> I, I I can only imagine, like, for all you guys, like this is that was your for you that was your livelihood, and then you know you had, you moved also right there from Germany, so you didn't have necessarily the support, and just your release is out there. You're away to get away, de stress. That was all taken away from you. Mm -hmm. so I go. Yeah, it was um, it was a rough run um I stepped, I stepped back a little bit um mm -hmm. if i'm honest and it was um yeah you feel too proud to admit this the, the mental health stuff and stuff like this and when they're you know you, you're supposed to be well not supposed to be anything but you know we get to do what we do what we love it's been a dream since i was a kid to make music and um, do it for a living and travel the world and, and we get to do that so how is it possible that someone in that position can be, you know, fit up for mental health? But yeah, it it it, it happened pretty badly. And um, with the move and yeah, the no support and the stop dead on the the livelihood and just everything kind of collapses around you. It, it was extremely difficult. But we pulled through it, and you know, it was just like getting to the fundamentals of what it was that made, that made me fall in love with music or traveling in the first place, just kind of kept it alive. So it's been um, a real tough journey to get back on track, try again. Well, I'm glad that you're getting back on track. It definitely was not easy for anybody. And I think, I think it helped us as a scene kind of open up to be able to talk about it, to be able yeah. to say, you know, hey, we, a lot of us are struggling. It's not, you know, from the artists to the fans, like, we lost something. We really did lose something. And just there was a lot of uncertainty. So I think it's it's good that we're talking about it and that we're yeah. saying, you know, we need to, because there's things that needed to change. Like we need to decompress, have time off, have that work-life balance. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we are, you know, doing what we're able to do and being able to support, you know, yeah. the people who we love even without going to their shows so i think it was kind of a good awakening and hopefully that was awesome to see as well i'm saying it's not just about me it's about i i know of a few and um if not there'd be many more that i'm unaware of who not just suffered from mental health but had the whole world turned upside down outside of music included yeah but to see the amount of support from everyone and anyone friends or colleagues or people you've never met even just in the virtual world there for support offering to kind of be there it was it was awesome to see and it was really a, a beacon of you know of, of hope for a lot of people so all you guys watching this all you trans family guys thumbs up awesome you helped me through it at least and i'm <laughs> sure that you helped many many more through it so everyone mm -hmm. Hey, I'm glad we were able off. to help you. <laughs> hey, Adam. Um, Adam says hello. He's in there. <laughs> Adam Kehoe. <laughs> hey, Adam. So um, we have a Drop79 Music says, could it be that the producers keep all the big banging tracks secret during the pandemic without all the live shows on stage? 
Do you think there's a lot of tracks that were not released that are going to yeah. be released? Um, I, I think there's a knock-on effect. Um, mm-hmm. Not just the tracks, obviously. Again, I'm just speaking from my own experience. Can't speak for everyone. But I would imagine that, obviously, we had the wind knocked out of our sails quite considerably so having you know keeping on top of your game and keeping that that momentum going and you know fresh and vibing and, and getting the best out of you it, you've got to be in the right mental space for that and the right head space to be able to kind of put your stuff out and then obviously with a lot of people struggling the entire ecosystem of music scene collapsed so the the the, the funding of people's livelihoods had gone so this this filled us down to labels it filled us down to the promotion the market and the graphics designers it filled us right out mm-hmm. so a lot of things ground to a halt so i wouldn't blame it i wouldn't say blame but i wouldn't say it was just we're keeping back the big tracks during the pandemic mm-hmm. it was the whole infrastructure needed to work properly in order to keep what we're expected to go and keep it going right so yeah there'd be a few things um I did keep a few things back. <laughs> it's just kind of something I would work a lot longer on. Um, we have more time to do it. And so, yeah, there's a, there could be a few reasons. So it's a good question. That's a really good question. I'll get back to you a diff- more definitive answer on that. Nice. Awesome. Arthur? Oh, man. I've been wanting to ask this question for a while. Uh, 2020 <laughs> saw quality releases on Transgression. Hence, uh, one of my favorite labels of 2020. What plans do you have for uh, this year with uh, the you. label? Well, as you probably noticed, we, we haven't released anything on Transgression for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And we, um, I did put a, um, a small notice out um, during my time. And and we, we seized Transgression. It wasn't really oh. working out the direction that we were going. But there is something coming extremely soon and it's all been been working on this for quite a while now and um there'll be more information on that coming so it's not that it's over and done with we're now moving on to uh i wouldn't say bigger and better because that's more of a cliche but definitely a new direction new foundation um, which epitomizes what i feel a label should be so nice. that's coming <laughs> so, so that's definitely idea. since you can't tell us can you give us more hints <laughs> Would that be the same though? Um, let's, uh, yeah, see, okay, okay. Um, let me think, let me think. Okay, so we're going to try and bring what the record label is, what it's about, and bring it into the modern age, utilizing all our technologies. Let's just say that. Right. Okay. All right. All right, a little better. More it's it's not work. And I want to, yeah, I can't, I can't even say who yet, but um, that, it's a massive, massive shout out to, to everyone who's been helping out with this and who's been part of it. It's been um, a lot of planning, a lot of work, a lot of time out to um, to get this right. So, yes, a lot more information coming soon. Um, we're in the final stages of prepping everything. So, yeah. Ooh, nice. Exciting. Awesome. Excited. Nice. So, your beard. Your beard is definitely coming in and it's looking really full. I haven't seen you. Last, last time I saw you were clean shaven. How long did it take you to grow that in? <laughs> I don't actually know. This is, I, I was going for the don't give a shit look for a while. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> <clears throat> and because we were locked down, like in a you couldn't even go to the shop, the local convenience store. You couldn't even uh-huh. go out. So it was like, oh, I'll just save my razors. <laughs> 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 and it just kind of went, and Anya always kind of, she was on the fence with it. I also had that stubble. I was very, rarely, you must have caught me on a really good day to like, see me clean shaven because I, I rarely got clean shaven. <laughs> like a baby, man. I mean, um, so I yeah, always I was stubble. I've got pictures with you with absolutely no hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were, so I Anya, think the last time I, I, when we were at ADE, you were completely bald head, no beard, anything. So. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what. Oh, it's probably I probably screwed up my um my my my, my stubble probably. I was like, shit, that's it all up now, which is like, yeah, that happens. <laughs> so no, Anya was um she was uh she was on the fence with the the, the stubble thing. So it was like kind of like all in or all out. I'm like go on, let's let's leave it go on. So I let it grow. But I know, I, I had no gigs to go to. I know I know engagements to 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 um you know you see that to you know look scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> There's only way to put it in the kind of the mid phase. Everybody knows which tries to grow, and I didn't think I could grow beard. It was always like a pathetic effort. But you just give it a little time, and a little bit of a little bit of hair, and a little bit of um, TLC, and it'll come through eventually. It's still not there yet, but um, yeah, I'm kind of 
Kind of stuck now. Oh, you're, you're well, at the, you're the update. You're gonna have to update all your press shots now. Oh boy, <laughs> I actually have some. I actually had. I did ah! actually, I just. I did. Yes. Um. I think there's one or two of them on there now. Um. Yeah, I've got some new press shots with my. Yeah, I'm actually on, on, on one of them. Um, it's got from the silence really big. <laughs> it's, it's a bit much. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I'm starting to see how grey I am as well because mm-hmm. I've got no hair to see uh-huh. the grey hair coming through. But now, if you really look closely, it depends on what, uh-huh. how far away it is. There's a little <laughs> bit of um, distinguished gentleman it's, look coming it's through. Giving your, you know? It's giving up your age. <laughs> the number. <laughs> Oh. You, st- you still look only a day over 25. <laughs> oh, Danielle. <laughs> oh, so kind. I know. I know. And I. <laughs> um, oh, Drop 79 Music also says you announced a new track to be released next time. Is there a date when it will be released? Not a date just yet, but I can confirm that it will be the first track on the new label. Ooh. Nice. So, Drop so that's why. I keep asking those kind of questions because we might be able to get some more information out of them. I like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'll, my, my form will go crazy after this if I did. So, yeah. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> So that's what you were talking about when you said you're embarking on the new business, new ventures, new everything. So, all right, well, that, post, business, that post makes uh, more sense now. <laughs> well, a little more on that. I'll, we'll, we'll try and redirect it a little bit. So not so much about the little, but with that, I'm actually, um, I'm currently working alongside some, um, well, I'm working in the community almost. I'm just taking a job as such, but I've, um, I'm building a new studio. And nice. with that studio... Um, we're, we're working with a local kind of community and, and council and stuff to kind of bring in, you know, under people who are vulnerable. They, they, they're kind of struggling and uh, as a creative outlet. <clears throat> so we're working with these guys to kind of bring them into the studio and we make music, not just trans music, it can be anything. These guys are like some of them are poets, man. They're beautiful written poetry and they would turn them into songs and we write them and we get them recorded. And so we're building this um, this creative hub um in my local city to you know give something back to the community and have a something else rather than just relying on you know as we know at, at any given time with our fingers we can lose our livelihoods in the music industry mm-hmm. so we've been busy doing that as well so yeah there's, there's a lot going up there's business my new business coming up um, new record labels coming so yeah that post was wow. maybe a little bit enigmatic but um hopefully that clears up a little bit for you Awesome. That's absolutely amazing. I, you know, I do, I love doing charity work and giving back, especially Mm -hmm. to kids and people who are struggling. So that's just absolutely amazing what you're doing over there, Darren. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Keep those questions coming, guys. (laughs) What I'm really curious to know is when I think of a Darren Porter track, the person that comes to my mind immediately are your memorable melodies from deep blue to feel again just like as an example like what is your what is your thought process when it comes to writing melodies hmm. it's it's more of a visual thing believe it or not hmm. Let, let, okay, let me start with this. I'm I'm a little bit weird. Okay, I'm so and that's fine. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit weird. And yes, um, well, when I grew up, I never got any piano lessons or music lessons. I never got taught how to write music or listen to music or anything. It was all by ear. So my mm. my my playing style is absolutely horrendous. It's really bad technique, but it's just my <laughs> way of doing it, right? Mm. And with this, I kind of developed these little these patterns, and then I was associate these patterns to colors. So sort of like synesthesia. Yeah, I was going to say synesthesia. Yeah, I've got a little bit of that going on, and it's Mm. been around since I was a kid. And so basically, I see colors um, in music since then. So when I hear, I already hear, I see the pattern emerging with the colors, and that becomes the sound. And that's why my melodies will have a certain feel to them and a certain Mm -hmm. kind of um, harmony that goes goes alongside them. It's like that the colors need to be a gradient, they blend, they can't be contrasting next to each other, they've got to blend, and this creates this way of me thinking it's 
it's really difficult to explain. Um, oh no, like not, I totally get yeah. it. I'm kind of the same way. Like uh, back in college, I used to uh, I used to sing everything from vocal, vocal jazz to opera, even. And uh, while well, reading uh, the sheet music, I wouldn't actually read the notes, but I would always associate the songs with colors. So I yeah, kind of get what you're talking about. Yeah, and if you switch, if you flip the genre, like um, imagine I've got like HD off an 8k vision and trance music sort of thing and when it comes to the colors mm -hmm. but not as vivid or, or, as, or as crisp or as you know clear or high resolution of the genres but I, I when i flip genres to, to whether it's film scoring whether it's ambient music chill pop whatever mm -hmm. it is i'm um commissioned to do i see in a different type of color scale almost different hues and stuff like this um so when i'm writing music for myself i tend to just on the on the screen i put onto visuals sometimes like space fly throughs and nebulae and stuff like this and you just kind of play around and something will come out of what i'm visualizing what i couldn't think of myself it'll come out of an mm -hmm. image that i'm looking at it is like i said i'm weird so i, I said that <laughs> earlier so i'll kind of back me over right <laughs> <laughs> i think that's actually really cool to see that i always wondered like how you guys come up with some of these melodies and how how do you see it and like how do you pressure do you just Hit a bunch of keys and they sound nice you go with it or is it more fit? like i am not not musically inclined at all when it comes to that so it's really interesting as somebody from my aspect to hear you guys talk about that because it's mm -hmm. kind of like i want to get in your head because i want to be able to see this like i think it would be a very well, beautiful it's not always that weird see. um <laughs> it's not always that way sometimes i mean Actually, to be honest, more often than not, my melodies come last in my productions. It's not the first thing I do. Oh wow! I, I, I tend to get my my tone, the drive, the elements, and what I'm feeling, um, or, the, or the, the you know the vibe, or mm -hmm. when I get to the breakdown, or whatever sounds I'm using, or a little bit of sound design. I play around with sounds and stuff like this, and then something will kind of like, oh, this feels in this direction, and when it's in this direction, I'll get that kind of visual thing going on in that direction, and then something will come out of it. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll fall onto a you know a sound we're playing around with or or whatever. Sometimes a sound will inspire how the melody will sound rather than playing the melody first and forcing it into something. So it, it's, it's more it's not just one distinctive way of, of, of doing it. But um, yeah, when when I do tuition, sometimes um, one of the hardest things to do is is actually to <laughs> teach how I write the melody. So mm. I tend to teach how you how, how to think. I mean, there are some basic, let's say, algorithms, if you know what I mean, to, um, for harmonics and basic mathematics, really, in music that you can follow. To, circle to of a, fifths. Um, your circle of fifths and your harmonies and your thirds. Yeah, yeah that type of thing. Mm -hmm. You can um, you can give a, a pretty decent melody that way, too. So you couple them together and a little bit of improvisation, you get this kind of you know, you a big toolbox of uh, creativity. God. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, like, cause I want to be in your head. Like, I want to be in your guys' head to see, like, these pictures and things that you're seeing when you create it. Like, I want to, I want someone to, like, digitally or draw, animate it out. So, yeah, I, I should, should uh, screw, um, brush up on my video skills, see if I can, um, <laughs> dump my hand in, um, in video as well as audio. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, you said, you mentioned um, that you do some film scoring. What films, have you done any notable films that we might know of? Not massive notable ones, but uh, say mm -hmm. film scoring, it, um, helping out with, you know, you, I'm certainly not in a position to be uh, some Hollywood studio and go, hey, Darren, uh, with a big <laughs> $200 dollar budget movie, uh, $200, $200 million dollar budget movie, um, <laughs> you find you having a crack at this one. Um, no, it, it was more like um, some musical supervision, um, little tips and, you know, little help out every now and then. Um, I don't know if you, a couple of years ago, I was, when I was in LA, actually, um, I a friend of mine, but he would become friends was um, Junkie XL, Tom Hulkenberg. He invited mm. me to his home and um, oh, wow. a nice, small, I don't say working relationship, but um, he and Harry works in Williams as well. Um, I visited his studio when I'm in LA too. Mm. So oh, wow. I've always been involved in the film, the idea of film scoring for small documentaries, game apps. Um, I recently done a small little um, game app, a really funny kind of cartoony Irish kind of um, vibe, <laughs> an Irish jig kind of music. So yeah, um, my my creative juices definitely get flown um, with other styles and stuff like that, not just with trance music. But I lend a lot of my experience from writing from 
you know, orchestral and cinematic and synthetic, synthetic kind of hybrids into trance. That's where I get my sound, or I say my sound, but where I get a lot of my ideas from. Um, it, it comes from a strong place in in scoring. Mm. That's that's amazing. Like I don't think sometimes people realize, like, oh, you're just a trance producer, you're just an electronic DJ. Oh, no. They don't realize the how much actual different talents that you have and where else it can go through just playing a festival. Like you're not just making music for just a festival. You make music for all these other projects. All these so different. Oh, amazing! That I, yeah, so been, people yeah. don't realize that you know. Well, the trance stuff came around after um, I, uh, I had a crack at the um, the film scoring, and I said I keep saying um, movie scoring, but more mainly documentaries, small independent movies, uh, and things like this. Um, it, it came from my understanding of how to build music from that. To say, you know, I, I really loved trance music since I was a kid. You know, when I first heard like the Stephen Miles Children back in the early '90s, it was just like oh, this shit bang. I love that, <laughs> um, and it just stayed with me and listened to it all the way through. And then I just, I just didn't have the, I want to say the know-how, but the, the maturity, I think, um, to to go into what trance music was because um, commercial back then. So I just tried my hand out. It was a, it was a kind of a byproduct. I didn't realize that it would turn into what it did. Um, I knew I, I always knew I was going to be involved with music at some point um, when I was a kid. It was going to be something, and yeah, the trance just got a hold of me, man. It just kind of got me addicted. I'm getting like smacking up on <laughs> trance music every the weekend. It's... <laughs> well, we're glad that you came over to the trance world. <laughs> so you mentioned yeah, you yeah. mentioned uh, Robert Miles Children, which you say that was a track that gave you sort of like this aha moment of this is what I wanted to compose or what track was it? Yeah, I think it was it was because it was so out of the blue. I remember when I first heard it, it was on the radio in my um, my dad's car when we were driving mm. a long journey and it came on on the radio. And it was just like starting to come out and, you know, it's not to be commercial. We didn't have any other cassette player in that car. That's <laughs> how so all that thing was. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and it was on the radio and it was like, you know, imagine in the 90s you had all this cheesy kind of like R&B smooth kind of poppy stuff that was going on. I it mean, just crack, that, man. that stuff's it good just too crack. in moderation. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, it didn't prick me. It didn't prick my ears up whatsoever. But I remember in the car and this kind of don't, don't, don't. I was like, ooh, I was like, whoa, and I was like, rave music or something, whatever. I was like, this is what the grown-ups listen to, the party music and stuff. Yeah, and this piano, <laughs> and then just this whole thing, and, and it, it grabbed me instantly. That one note, um, with with a delayed, with a, that one fourth delay on that piano mm -hmm. in its own space, it sounded like it was huge in this massive ambient arena by itself. And I was just like, wow. And I was just hip hypnotized by it. I was captivated. And when um, those guitars came in, and do -do -do, I was like, whoa, goosebumps. Just at, at that age, I was like, yeah, there's something here. There was something here. And it was from that, I started to listen to music differently. I was like, mm. oh, I wonder why I got the goosebumps on that moment. And then it was the same year, The Lion King came out. 1994, yes. I think it was. Oh, wow. And, um, and I watched The Lion King. And I remember I was captivated by the music in that too and that's how i discovered hans zimmer back then days like like mm -hmm. god it took you 30 years now um it was the same sensation the same harmonic movement of what Rob miles done but in a complete different genre complete different context different sounds but it got the same results and that's what got me hooked into music why i need to know why mm -hmm. so then i started you know obviously this weirdness in me, the synesthesia kind of thing in me started to put together these um, these harmonic movements as colours almost. I started to recognise it in places of the music and film scores. Mm. And I started playing around and that, that's how it all started. So yeah, that Rob Miles Children was pretty much the the seed that, that that grew into what it is now. That's absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it that you know, Robert Miles and Hans Zimmer from The Lion King is what <laughs> is there because it's I think you know, we all have what got, got us into music and what, what we love for music, but everyone has a different reason why. And I love your reason. It's just absolutely awesome. Everyone's like, got a reason. <laughs> it's your reason to, it's your reason to, you know, get into whatever it is you're into. It's your reason to get up in the morning. It's your reason to listen to music. And I love, yeah, those reasons are interesting. And I, and I really, really like that. I like to hear the people's stories also. So, yeah, thank you for letting me explain. I, I don't really get the chance to do these type of questions <laughs> on interviews, to be honest. So. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, me and Alistair around December, I asked them, I was like, I want to bring back my podcast. So I was like, do you want to do it with me? And he was like, yeah. 
was like, yes. And then we just kind of figured it out. Much made along. in heaven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we, we get along really well and we have a good repertoire. <laughs> so, a repertoire. Yeah, repertoire. Yeah. <laughs> repertoire. Wonderful repertoire. Yeah. Um, Adam wants to know do you have any more releases coming out on FSOE that you can share? Um, I don't have any planned for now. Oh. Um, like I say, we come out of the, the what we've been through, and I was I really wasn't in the place. Not only that, my, my studio got damaged uh, in this house. We had a oh really no! Bad roof leak. Yeah, I had a really really bad roof leak, and it literally drenched my entire room. So the whole room got stripped out, and oh, I'm no. there, like right now in my dining room, like, the boxes are still behind me. <laughs> I'm still right now in my dining room, um, which is not the environment to be making music in. I really can't um, do much here. So I took my time making what I'm making. And so, yeah, whatever's coming up is going to be on the, the record label that's going to be announced soon. So, um, yeah, hopefully once I get into my new studio, which is literally imminently, I've got the keys, everything's ready to go in. Um, just need to find some of that magic stuff called money, I think it's called. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of it too. People got these trees, I don't know where they are. I don't know how to find it. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking for those trees, so they're, they're not here yeah. in the U.S., so hopefully... Yeah. I will have to continue traveling so I can find them. <laughs> I'm also looking for that pot of gold at the end of a rainbow, but I haven't seen, found that either. <laughs> so yeah, Adam. Um, so once I get once I get up and running and um, back, I see all my I see all my feet, but back into the, the groove of things. Um, like I say I'm doing a lot with the community as well. So I will be. Yeah, I've, I've, I've kind of adjusted myself into not being so full on with um, the releases, rather than kind of prepping for you know let's say the future so to speak just in mm -hmm. case you know but i'm definitely not going anywhere and i'm sure i'll have something um cooking really soon nice love it um <laughs> uh, so talk about moves so you moved to this place you moved from germany do you miss germany and do you plan to go back eventually one day i do miss bits of germany yeah i do i, I became you know actually it was, it was a really surprising fact that i spent more of my like let, let's say adults 21 a little bit more you're not really an adult, or you, you are what you want. Let's say wisdom of you, you know, living your adult life, you know, you've got to yes. figure it out or whatever. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my adult life in Germany than I did in the UK. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the UK, then I moved to Germany in my mid 20s. And yeah, I, was still, I, I definitely got Germified. <laughs> <laughs> um a little so but i did also miss the uk while i was in germany so there's parts of me and um i think one of the biggest things i missed from the uk in germany was that i because i grew up on the coast oh. so like every morning you got the sea breeze and you smell literally the the fish <laughs> oh. um, and i think i kind of missed um that that that, that northeast um that cold strong brittle weather and, and the sea and you know that was that was my home and the mannerisms and, you know, being you a little bit, I kind of lost myself a little bit when I was away because of mm. you know, social life. I didn't speak the language at first. It took a long time to get, get my head around the language. So I kind of got myself sucked into almost, um, well, I did, into an addictive personality of workaholism. And mm. it kind of adjusted and I didn't like who I was becoming. Oh. Um, mm. It was too much. It was, it was becoming too focused on, on pushing, going forward, going forward, scared of the future sort of thing. So when we moved back, it was a culture shock, not just for Anya, but for me coming home. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a culture shock yeah. shifting back into it. And then, yeah, obviously when the COVID struck and everything. So um, do I miss Germany? Yeah, because there's obviously a lot of happy times there, a lot of good memories and a lot of um, stability even um, when I lived over there. Since yeah. we came back, it's been a pretty rocky road. But I'm sure if you ask me again next year, I'll be, I'll be, um, there'll be a different answer, I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Keep asking those questions, guys. <laughs> what's it yes, what's it more of like a god? It's, how different is the rave culture in Germany compared to the UK? Good question. It's a really good question. I think the rave culture, it's it, they've both come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. In Germany, it came from this really deep underground, dark acid house kind of like Berlin back in the early nineties. The Bergheim sound. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, exactly that. So anybody who's you know wearing the stripes of of honor in, in in the rave scene and you know a veteran of the underground, 
they definitely, definitely have that inside of them. And there's, there's a vibe that goes with that. Mm. And in the UK, it evolved from a different type of, you know, the UK had its own trance sound. And the UK trance had its own branding, its own feel and vibe in the clubs. And, the, and it was the clubs that influenced quite a lot of the vibe in the UK, like the Ministry of Sound Clubs and your Fabrics in London. All these clubs, they had this and Gatecrasher and these had their brands and their clubs and there was a night that became magnificent. Whereas the German ones didn't have, well, the clubs were there, but they weren't so extravagant or mm. over the top, if you know what I mean. And he's saying, yeah, we did, yeah, we did. And I know you did, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's rattling off all the club names now, and um, we were <laughs> we were close to a very famous club, um, the Crapwork Club in Dresden, oh, which wow. is famous for some of those amazing, amazing nights. And I, I managed, I, I did actually have a night there. Um, didn't play there. I went to see, well, I got invited to go along by uh, DJ Quicksilver, who was German. Oh, nice. oh wow! Um, so we ended up becoming pretty close friends. He was a really, really, really nice guy, and um, it turned out it was a, a real deep techno night. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'd been playing a lot of trans parties over the years, and I went to this techno party, and it was so stripped back, like there was barely any coloured lights or anything. It was just white light, flashing strobes, and, and lots of um, like smoke, <laughs> lots oh, of CO two kind of thing. And it was dark, and it was and it was the vibe was amazing, and I, and I totally get what that whole underground German vibe was. So yeah, it's an interesting. It's, it's hard to say what the difference is, but I think that they've both got their massive, massive merits, but they come from different, um, you know, different seeds, if you know what I mean. But that's my, that's my personal experience. I'm sure everyone has their own different view on that. So and so, uh, checking out those clubs, it's more of like a, a culture shock at first. Um. Yeah, because you kind of you go into the preconceived idea of what it might be, but then it just ends up being better <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah Ooh. you don't yeah it's, it's uh, I'm, not, I'm not comparing the uk or germany whatsoever they're both absolutely brilliant in their own right mm. and the same with when you get to the czech republic and the same when you go to holland i mean holland's history and trans and dance music is just legendary and oh, yeah. a different vibe to what it was in germany so yeah and it's all kind of become into this melting pot now of this universal vibe of i think we call it trans family these days mm-hmm. so it's it's um yeah we wouldn't have what we had now if it wasn't for each of those things being planted previously in, in, in the different countries when they were kind of, you know, the travel wasn't so frequent. Yeah. yeah. I think for, for like me, like, when I think of like Germany, I think of like the Love Parade. And you remember seeing like Paul Van Dyke, you see the videos like Paul Van Dyke playing, you know, Ford Angel on this thing. For like five million every people. fucking where. Like, <laughs> and it's like, it was one of the things I was like, I'm going to go Love Parade one day and then it didn't happen. But I was like, I know they have something similar to that, I think, like in the Czech Republic or somewhere. Our uh, Prague, yeah, somewhere. I don't Zurich, street uh, parade. Zurich Street Parade. Street Parade. Uh, street Parade, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, also, I, but, you know, like, I remember seeing videos of Love Parade in the 90s and stuff, and I was like, I want to be there. Like, so when I think of like the 90s, like Germany, German sound and the German culture, like, that's where my mind goes to every single time. Mm-hmm. It's just that yeah. those videos of it. And then when I think of, you know, the UK, I think of, you know your second summer of love with like Paul Kenfold coming out and bringing you know that a lot of that Biza sound in with him, and mm-hmm. I think so. I it's like I see there's so much history like you said in there, and it's like okay but for me coming from the states looking over that's what's iconic for me because we have our own in the states we have, we have we have Detroit we have New York we have Chicago we have L A who has each of their own different scenes with it but there's something very iconic about that German love parade and that second summer of yeah. love in the uk that's just i think when people for i think for trans fans we always thinking of the heyday people are like oh the good golden days like that so, is that that those that memory yeah, it's the german <laughs> and the dutch they they definitely have the that's the, they've got they've got the edge on the on the heyday kind of um <laughs> spectacle it's, it's, I mean, it's no coincidence that the majority of the let's say, we'll call them legends now and the living legends uh vast majority are dutch and german guys and it's in their blood and they they spawned so much inspiration around the rest of the world and especially when it became commercial almost in the late 90s early 2000s in the uk it it, it, yeah. it reached out to people like me um i don't know i was i i lapped it up like a like a dog i was give me more i need more of this now <laughs> and i was straight to college straight to uni music production college listening to my, my my cd my my sony walkman 
mini disc player, whatever it was, they wouldn't even fit my pocket. <laughs> They're too big. What's the point? By the way, what's the point in having a CD, a portable CD player that doesn't fit on the inside pocket of your jacket? <laughs> no point at all. So you're walking around anyway. Yeah. So that's how much I would every day. Eight one day, Ministry of Sound, the annual cream anthems, Dave Pierce's oh. um, countdown trance all the CDs were crazy. Yeah. And it was just yeah, that became a part of who you were. Yes. Um so okay, so we have a couple questions in here. So you said, um, if you could choose at which event or festival you would play first after the pandemic. That's an unfair question. <laughs> any, any, absolutely any, any. anything that has a sound system. I wouldn't single I wouldn't single a party out. I will play anywhere if the people in that room want to be there as much as I want to be there. And then it makes no difference where it is. Yeah. I, I it's nice like I, you know, I'm definitely lucky being in California. Um we've been, we've had been having those car raves and then like last night at Marcus Schultz going like 2008 Marcus Schultz, 138 up left. And it was it's just so nice listening to on Function One speakers and just oh, full blast, man. lasers, lights. Yeah, the dancers from Dream State up on the stage, you know, the LEDs what? going. And it was just like, it's back. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right there, you save it, it right? You save it every beat. <laughs> also, Danielle, you're frozen. She's frozen in a nice pause. She was. Right? <laughs> she was walking. She was like doing that. <laughs> you were frozen, by the way. I don't know. Yeah. No, so you, two you, but but you, you can frozen, hear me, though? Yeah. Were you able you to could, hear me, though? But there was okay. like five seconds of silence. Okay. That wasn't important. Oh. I was I was just bragging that I was in the club last night, so it's fine. That was God's way of telling me stop bragging. Preach, <laughs> sister. <laughs> I want to hear more. But yeah, no, I yeah, I don't I don't blame anybody for like you said just being somewhere where people want to see you play and you're able to play. Like, doesn't matter where the venue is. It's just a great feeling yeah. to be back. Definitely. Um, Still so weird. We have another question in here. So, uh, the been asked, oh, so what is your process for creating a new track and how long does it often take for you to finish? That's a good question. So I'll, um, I'll try and answer. Well, we'll just remove the last 12 months because <laughs> that's a, definitely <laughs> a one-off. Um, okay. So usually I've got to, um, I've got to have something that sparks the, Ooh, I have an idea and I have no idea what that could be until it happens. <laughs> It could be a pattern I see, it could be a sound I hear, and it could be, I don't know, uh, hearing a song on the radio or something like that, a random song where it's not doing what I want it to do. <laughs> or it doesn't go where I want it to go, and I go, it should go there, then I've got an idea, right, okay, then I'll go and it evolves that way. So I'll get an idea, that's if I start with a melody, which is not that rare, um, but it's usually a spark of something that gives me a, like a, a foundation or something, whether it's a groove, a beat, a sound or something. And out of that, I just play with it as many ways I possibly can to see what happens to it. If I go this way, if I go that way, and then, you know, it's trial and error, that'll work, this won't work. And a little bit of experience coming to every now and then. Mm -hmm. And I'll give myself a couple of rules. This track's going to be, it's going to have, you know, the, the main element will be, you know, power energy. Is it going to be emotional? Is it going to be kind of like puff your cheeks out when, when, it, when the, you know, when it opens up in the breakdown? Is it going to be an ARP, beautiful type of melody that has a story? Or is it going to be a riff that's just going to make, make you nod? Yeah, that type of thing. So I'll have these kind of like planned out or distinctive or definitive directions uh, before I uh, approach it. I would never approach a track just like, yeah, see what happens. Because you get a lot of frustration doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's always with a, an idea of some sort, play around with it and then make some decisions along the way for definitive rules of what the energy, the drive, speed, um, what type of melody and how long the story is going to be and what I want to convey in that mm. track. Nice. I love it. I love that. That voice kind of makes, tell the story. So. <laughs> I love it. Apollo, um, oh, go ahead. Apollo. Uh, okay. Uh, a follow-up to that question. Last year you released uh, your remix of Say Hello by Marlo and Alien, which is 
just an absolutely fantastic remix. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And I'm uh, really curious to know how did you uh, how did you approach the track? What was your initial vision of uh, the remix? Yeah, so I was I was very excited to to start on this, and it's it's a really interesting story because I never got to hear the I never got to hear the original. Oh wow! Actually, yeah. I, um, so I was very privileged for Marlo to contact me and ask me. Marlo's a lovely guy, amazing, amazing guy, and um, he he was looking for something really distinctive on this collaboration he done with Halion. And it was, yeah, he wanted to have this energetic power driving an emotional side of what this this track could be. So um, it was a, it was an idea to, um, let, let's see what happens and do you want to give it a shot? So um, I asked just for the, for the vocals only, just the vocals. Oh, wow. So I wanted to, so I wanted to interpret those vocals in a way with a chord progression or with a riff or something that which echoed what Helium was doing in that track. So um, yeah, when she sings like that chorus do, 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 and that sort of thing, I had to get this in somewhere. So it was a no tedious task, but it was a lot more effort in this uh, remix than the normal um, when, I, when I produce a track to try and pull it together. And I was really, really happy with the result of it, um, even though I wasn't in the best frame of mind when I made it. Um, but uh, yeah, I spent a lot more time on that one than I normally would. Oh, and wow. I was so happy with the response on when it came out. And yeah, Armin played it quite a few times, I think, on, on the state of trance as well. And it done pretty well in the charts. And yeah, just to get the work with Helian, obviously she's a fantastic vocalist, an amazing artist. Mm-hmm. Um, to be asked by my model, who, uh, like I said, he's a really good guy. Um, it was impossible to say, obviously I wasn't going to say no, <laughs> who would? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was... Yeah, it took. It was. It was close to me that one. That one was close to me, so I put a lot more effort into that. Um, and it came from a different place, so I'm really glad that, I, that you you interpreted it as I meant to put it out that way. That's awesome. Do you, so? Do you get like more goosebumps or some kind of feeling when fans see your vision of what you're putting out there? Is it? Yeah, it's hard because, like I said, trance is really subjective everyone mm-hmm. it really is a lot of people just want that boom 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 and the groom and the tech and the puff and that's, that, that makes them feel so good and that's what it is for them amazing some people they don't care about the first minute and a half of the end but they just want the breakdowns they just want to close <laughs> their eyes put their hands up and cry you know <laughs> it depends. Yep. it's so subjective i, I know i know so somebody sub- who's like that <laughs> <laughs> i think so and it's so subjective to, to many people so um yeah, when you recognize someone is interpreting what you felt as you were making a track. And the perfect example of this, it was um, it was captured on, on camera, actually, um, a transmission. When I played the transmission in Prague, um, I'd done a track with Anna Criado, Dream Like I Ooh. Do. Mm. And um, yeah, the, the, just by pure luck, coincidence, or the, you know, the stars are aligning, or whatever you want to call it, um, the, the camera crew at transmission, they were kind of sweeping the crowd with their cameras. And they caught a, a shot of of this girl on on some guy's shoulders, and um, it was just at the breakdown of Dream Like I Do, and she's she had a flag in her arms, and she's got a hand across her mouth, and she was bawling her eyes out, crying oh. with joy. I don't know what it was pure. She was just like crying, shaking her head, and she was wiping her tears. And um, and I didn't see this until someone cut cut it out and kind of like made me aware of it. And I, and I watched it, and it, it got me. <laughs> I was yeah. like, <laughs> so um i spoke to um i spoke to my guys and um yeah we found out who she was and we sent her some merchandise and stuff just to say thank you oh, for that moment and it awesome. was that and it was that 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 cliff i think epitomizes what trance is for me it, or as a producer and a dj or a performer what what it is even if that one person that entire eighteen thousand people in that room that night if that one person was touched in that way by something that i and anna created in the way we meant it to come across made it all worth it. It was it was awesome. So yeah, it's it's hard to give a straight answer when it comes to the all the emotional stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I think as a trans fan, like and I know some like you said, there's some trans fans who just they want the big banging, that's what they that's them. I, and that's I, I, I they want their them. hammers and they I want love, their I acids. Love I love tech trash. Like that's what, if you want me to dance, 
play that. Like, that's how I'll dance to that. Also, but uh, that emotional uplift, like that, you know, that tech left, like even where it's just yeah. spanging and then you just get like this vocal or you just get this melody that kind of just stops you in your track and just, oh my God. That's that's what I live for. That's what I want to hear on a dance floor. Just that, yeah. where you're just going and going, and emotions are going. You're dancing and you just get hit with something. You're just like, release tears. <laughs> we'll keep the camera on you, Danielle. Next time, we'll keep the camera on you. <laughs> we'll not the keep the camera on me. I've been on too many cameras. I'm like, oh, please, please take it off me. Please be it off. Please take it off me. I think the funniest one was um at. So EDC, I think it was probably like Paul Oakenfold set or somebody, and I, the camera was coming by, and I was like on the rail, and I saw it, and I was like, putting glasses on, I was like, oh, nobody's going to see me. Oh, can't see me anymore. I was like, you can't <laughs> see me anymore. And I was just like, I'm not looking at you. Just keep going. Just keep going. That's funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to be, uh, I, try, I try to avoid the camera as much as I can for that. <laughs> Embrace the emotions, Danielle. Let it out. Let it all out. I don't want the emotions. I just don't want them on camera. Cry more <laughs> on camera. Um, so we're talking about your production stuff. So you, you made you did make a recent post about going back to your roots. What does that exactly mean? Okay, well, this is this bleeds nicely <laughs> from the whole subjective trans nature thing. So <laughs> And we touched on it right at the beginning with a with a um, with a Robert Miles track, and I noticed a post. Um, I don't know, God knows, a couple of months ago, and it's a it's a draining argument a lot of fans are having. Like, um, oh, why is trans is boring now? It was better back in the early two thousands. It was uh, why they can't be a trans like they used to, and it's like oh, that this that it's argument unfair. exhausts I, I me. Fair question. It is exhausting because. We have a sense of nostalgia attached to some things um, back from those days, which trigger happy memories and makes us feel good, which you don't yes. have nostalgia with new tracks. And, you, and I'm, I'm going to take a shot and say that the majority of the tracks that you feel so happy and nostalgic about now, you didn't get that in the first shot in, in 99 or 2000 when, when it first came. It came over time. You remember, you're like, oh, yeah, and that's it. Triggers your busy times and when everything was crazy good and commercial. Um, so going back to my roots was, was, was basically trying to find out what it was in the music back then mm -hmm. that made me smile, made me get the goosebumps and made me feel good. And because it was so diverse, which is what the argument's having, we need more diversity, but there was something in each of them that was making me react to it. So what was that one thing, even though it's such a diverse type of, type of music? And I kind of, I would say I figured it out, but I kind of, I, I identified something recently and I made it, I made a track, it's finished. It will be coming on the new label. Um, and it's got a really cool title to kind of, you know, give you a, a look back to my images and my memories, my nostalgia of what, what trans does to me or what it did to me over the years. Mm -hmm. And I try to bring that back into it. So, yeah, going back to the roots, yeah, the root of the seed of what grew my love and passion for this music. Love it. I love it. I think, yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Alistair. I've got a lot of thinking to do. I've got a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so we've got a... <laughs> hmm. So outside of, of trance, what, what genres of music do you listen to and do you gain inspiration from those outside genres? Well, yeah, I think the obvious one would be film scores and film music um, because... It's one of the biggest ones, in fact, because film music's job, the whole reason why you have music in movies is to dictate the emotion. Mm -hmm. The music tells you how to feel. And you can, and there's loads of YouTube parody videos out there where they'll take a real serious scene, like some of the most famous scenes in, in cinema, and they'll just switch out the, the score in the background just a little bit, and you end up laughing. <laughs> and then you should be bawling your eyes out with tears. Yeah. And that's... And you watch a horror movie or you or try and watch a scare movie without the music in the right place or, or flip that out for something just similar or a little bit different or even just stupid. You just can't watch that movie. It's a dog shit. <laughs> it's the music <laughs> that dictates that emotion. And that's powerful. That's a powerful tool mm -hmm. to have. So, um, yeah, over the years, I've, I've listened very carefully and tried to understand patterns and stuff like this in, in music to why certain emotions are triggered by it. So mm -hmm. I take a lot of inspiration from that. And when it comes to the trans music, I, I get to my breakdowns. You need to have some intrigue. You need to have some kind of element, something 
mysterious or, or whatever. I mean, I don't what I'm trying to use, but something something else other than an obvious instrument. And this is where ambient music comes in. I love ambient music. I love the idea of blending and merging what's a sound effect and what's what's music and what's what's melodic. Blending mm-hmm. that together, blowing that line. So you get like not to get too technical on you, but there's a thing called granular synthesis where it takes like a sound and then it'll it'll jump backwards and forwards all over the sample and it'll give you this gritty kind of sound, this texture almost, this almost tonal texture. And you're waiting for it to resolve. It's disharmonic and then it's harmonic that isn't harmonic. And this kind of movement is intriguing. It kind of draws you in. And it's why we like, um, you know, scientific on you now, this is why we like listening to the waves and and rain noise. It's relaxing for us because of this granular movement and, and, and sound. So all of this, all this inspiration and ideas come from it because I'm a really big science geek as well. I love science and physics and all that stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, it all comes together into a big moldy, moldy. <laughs> all all melds together into a mold <laughs> of um, of of trance music for me. So um, yeah, I get a lot of inspiration mainly ambient music and um, and film scores. Speaking of ambient music. Uh... Have you by any chance listened to Lostly's ambient music alias? <laughs> I haven't recently, but Lostly um Cause... he's an amazing artist. This guy is stuff. Yeah. We we've had many a deep conversations on tour. Um uh, I've actually I've been on tour with Lostly quite a bit in Australia. So we spent spent quite a bit of time together. And we would talk for hours and hours and um guys so intelligent and so skilled and talented that mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we got into these deep conversations and I can sense that he has an understanding where uh, maybe it's a different view or, or what, as I do or a different feeling of what music is and different backgrounds, mm-hmm. but certainly trying to achieve the same result, mm-hmm. um, replicating the same feeling you get from whatever trans music does to you in other genres. And then uh, I'm pretty certain he'll have absolutely nailed that. <laughs> yeah, I just... Uh... I like lastly. I like I like you guys both. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell me both like, like guys. top tier. <laughs> I was like I was like, what would a Darren Porter and a Lostly night look like at like exchange? That would be fucking fantastic. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a few. Uh, we've had a few. I think it's been most of Europe and Australia. We had a couple of um, tours down there, and yeah, I mean, he's awesome. He's, he's good when he plays that really hard stuff too, man. He goes really off it. He likes to play live as with his um with, with a three or three. I was watching him um when we were setting up doing a like a, a, a run like a test sound check and testing. He was setting his um he was setting his, he was three or three up and he was playing around and sort of kick away. I'm like, yeah, man. I was like, pick it up. And he was just like flew with the resonance of the filters. <laughs> and it was just like so off the fly. It was so natural. And yeah, man, it hooked me. I was like, look, oh, there's a truck right there. You didn't push record. <laughs> you just tested it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I love when seeing you guys just kind of go. I love watching live life, like mm. where you guys are actually like making the tracks and stuff as you're going. It's so amazing for I would to watch. really like to do that somehow. But I need to figure out a concept, not just a concept, no a gimmick, but I need to figure out an actual way of making it happen. I know Giuseppe does it with um obviously he has a lot of uh, uh, the equipment and triggers to kind of set yeah. up pre pre um I well not not, not pre-record, that's the wrong word. It's um pre sets that have channel strips like and then stems. in his own way. Stemmed, yeah. So this is them um, as close to as live you're going to get because I kind of play like you know, four instruments or four keyboards at the same time. Especially <laughs> my, my rhythm playing is not that good. It really it isn't. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about doing some live breakdowns though. I am thinking that'd be about awesome. Oh. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I think Giuseppe has a whole do live like train he's trying to get everybody to go live and play live um i know some other people he's been like trying to recruit to go live so yes join yeah, that train go you, live if you, can, <laughs> if you can do it then i think you should and i i really enjoy just going with it i don't like you know i, I like to kind of when i'm in my zone like when i'm here it's all dark it's just me in the screen and i've got that nice i've got a piano one now um <laughs> I've just got a little piano going. I'm just like a. I'll just find something. <laughs> and there's nothing better than that, but I don't know where it's going. 
Yeah. <laughs> so when you put it live on, for me in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is really work. That's a gorgeous one. I like that. I'm sure the crowd like that. And then for me, it's like you know, 30 seconds. You look at the crowd, it's 45 minutes and half of them have gone home because I'm still in the <laughs> breakdown of this one idea I'm playing around with. <laughs> There's one chance of that happening. <laughs> Maybe not that live. <laughs> um, uh, Drop 79 Music says, are there some producers you would want to collab to do a track with? Um, yeah, of course. There's always... Yeah, I think I think Ferry Corson is the guy who's um he bearded me um for a collaboration, but I understand that obviously he is in such demand and and for the obvious reasons he he had a I think a similar way of thinking in melody writing and kind of sound choice and harmonies as I do, because I recognize a lot of you know things that he does in his music, regardless of the style or the genre, even if it's whatever what pick an alias, it's it's he's still he's still got his flavor in there. And it resonates with me. So I would really like to work with, with, with Ferry in in trance music. But outside of trance music, yeah, Junkie XL, I would love to work with him. Um, and obviously, Mr. Zimmer himself. But I think that's literally not going to happen. <laughs> oh, that, um, if, you, if you work with Hans Zimmer, I think that might be a career. That would be a career but, changer. So, like, oh, <laughs> I don't know if you could go further. I don't, I don't know how you can go after Hans he, Zimmer. He like, that is, like, that's Andrew it. Lloyd yeah. Webber, maybe? <laughs> nah, nah, no. Zimmer, I mean, like, that oh. Zimmer is fucking, God. The scores he's done, like, okay, so Da Vinci Code, fucking love that movie. That score he did for that is fantastic. But it's not interstellar. <laughs> Interstellar is same. Um, really we're not we're not made us about it, um, Hans Zimmer so much, but it's it's that's a really good example. So let's take um, let's take Da Vinci Code. I think, I think mm. the, the main theme of that one is Chablis de Sangral. Uh, yeah. It's a really beautiful line. I think John Callahan did a remix of it. And Hans Zimmer's music is really easy to remix because a lot of it is around about that one forty range. He really mm -hmm. has, it, and a lot of the themes are in there, and they're very harmonic motifs as well. So they translate pretty well into trance. Um, but with Interstellar, he done something so different, and it was that's the artistic side that I really like about him. And mm -hmm. you know, he won this idea of um, the documentary or a small clip that he recorded, and it blew me away when he explained what his thought process in in the Interstellar thing. And it was about the idea of using the big organ, the church organ that that was in here, the mm. big super mm. chords. Now, the typical Zimmer style would have been just get a couple of cellos on there, a few violins, big brass, and get the big, warm, big power impact chords that he normally is known for. But he didn't. He went for this big church organ. And the reason for that is that he had to record a live one because a church organ only works with literal air pressure, but nothing else, just air pressure. There's no electronics. So it's mm -hmm. compressed air pushing through these pipes to the point where it's breathing. And he says it's almost like the universe breathing is alive. It's physical pressure. And he's pushing the more power, and you can hear it in the music, and it comes across like, you know, this this universe you're in, this black hole sort of thing, the whole sort of thing. It's just it's alive, but you don't know how it's alive. And when you hear this whooshes and they breathe the breath in and out on this um, church organ, you 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 watch that movie really differently, and you hear that yeah. that score differently. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind, and um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why it's just ingenuity, reinventing music sort of thing. At blowing the line between sound effect and and what, what melodic instruments can do. Awesome. Um, Drop says before you do a collab with Ferry, make sure he should allow the release of Anara. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, guys, please, I'm sorry. I'll, um, I see quite often um, when I'm often tagged, and I get quite a few messages. And I'm, I get blamed for not releasing these. I get blamed for not releasing the fourth thing, take me away. I get blamed for, down why you do this, well, it's unfair, there's yet another image you can't have, boom, down. And it's like, no, it's not bad, it's not me. It's not me. And I doubt it's very either. It's the um, you know, higher powers to be. Um, all that type of thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I wish I could, you can have it. You can have it, but I can't. I have trouble. I want it. <laughs> um... I don't know if you're gonna get a bunch of people in your mailbox after this. So you said I could have this. I saw it in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the one um, disclaimer after to, that, though. 
<laughs> God. <laughs> we, yeah, we got to put it in there. Um, to wrap up, because we're already past the hour mark, because this goes by so fast. Um, so you started sharing and posting your Spotify recommendations. Why are you yep. starting to do that? Like, is there was there just creative outlet for you or just sharing the music? What was the reason behind it? Well, yeah, it was, um, I had no other way of expressing the tracks that I like. I had no gigs to play them out in. I had no way of um, yeah, connecting to the music and I wasn't in mm. a place to make it. So I said, I started to take a lot more notice of just music in general. I didn't care who the name was, what label it was from. I did not care if I was listening to it and they were doing anything to improve my, lift my mood a little bit. Uh-huh. went on my list and I started kind of compiling it almost as a diary of like yeah I remember that every track on there I'll have something that I, I liked and um, yeah it was it was almost like a creative outlet it was a way of keeping me grounded to, this, to, to the music that I love and not I didn't want to drift away from it so it's what's called Darren Porter plays what I nice. would play and I've been playing whether it's in a set or not because I didn't do that many sets so that was a way of me kind of compiling mm. what, what was working for me over the year I love, I love that, you know, it's helping not just you, but, you know, the artists you're supporting as well, because it's introducing people to be like, oh, what's this track? I didn't know what this track is, because a lot of times we hear say? other tracks from what the music you guys play, and we look at those track lists. So, yeah, it's definitely awesome. So get okay. your guys' final questions in before we wrap up. Um, mm-hmm. Alistair, do you have one more? Yeah. Uh, if you were given a podium... And you were placed in front of a camera, that camera were to be broadcasted to the entire world. What would your one message be to the entire world? Jeez, man, talk about going deep. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. You know, it's so cliche. And if you asked me this a year ago, it would have been a very different answer. Maybe two years ago, it would have been a very different answer. But I think for what I've experienced in the last 12 months, I think what a lot of people have experienced, not just about me, and what this pandemic probably has taught us is, yeah, just like, be kind to yourself without any fear of judgment. That's it. And that that will take you so much further and not be afraid of who you are. And then the people who don't like that will drift away and the people who do like that will gravitate and you'll become a much happier and more successful person that way. So um, be kind to yourself and... Yeah, fear no, fear, don't fear judgment. Do not fear any judgment. Love that's it. that's about it, really. It's as deep as I'm going to go. <laughs> it's as deep as it can get, I think. Um, and that will cover any 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 message. I think it'll, like, you can get it down to that. So, I love it. Uh, so, my final question. So, pre-pandemic, we all took things for granted. What's something you're never going to take for granted again? Time. My time. Yeah, my time. I was um, I was a workaholic, deep, mm-hmm. deep, severe workaholic, and I took time away, and I didn't see the damage I was creating in my own, myself, self-destructive behavior, my relationships uh, with Anya. It was, uh, we. I wasn't there enough, and I took it for granted so many things. And, yeah, in a way, for me personally, obviously, I had some losses in the family as well, so it's not to say it's been a blessing, but mm. there's a lot of good to come from this pandemic, um, not just the bad that we've all suffered. So I want to, yeah, I think I'm taking my time is a lot more precious than, than I once thought it was. Mm. Love it. I love it. I think Thank it's, you. you know, there's, like I said, there's so much we can do and take and, you know, there's definitely things I've taken for granted. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Traveling, never taking traveling for granted. I don't care how crazy, even all your bad luck <laughs> charms that you had from traveling. I know you're not gonna. <laughs> Maybe all your curses went away. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it was karma. You know, I, yeah. I was getting what I deserved. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. I know, but I was I'll take you know, even your you had a really bad run for a while there. With flights. I, was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I think what I think it was. One of the Beyond Wonderlands you played, you lost your headphones on the plane. And- oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I've been I've, I've been rerouted around the world and I have to drive a car halfway across Europe to get to the party, but I never missed a gig. I never missed no, a party. No, Only LA, but I wasn't missing it. That was my, my visa didn't come through in time. 
Yes. That was FSOE. Well, that was for the FSOE. Yeah. The yeah. FSOE party. I was very disappointed you weren't there. Oh, man. Me too. Man. Me too. <laughs> but you, you made up for it. You came back for another show and made up yeah. for it. So it was good times. But thank you so much for joining oh, us. Yeah, thank um, you very much, Thank Darren. you all, everybody in the, in the chat for joining and asking questions. We really do appreciate it. Um, just a reminder, we are back tomorrow for the reschedule that we had to do with Alan Watts. Um, same time, one o'clock here. Um, but thank you, Darren, so much. We really, 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 really Thank really you, Darren. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you for bringing me on. I, I had fun. I hope you guys did too. And thanks anyway, you watched. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see you all sometime really, really soon. I really mean that. Awesome. Well, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, buddy. See you, See you guys. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.